When you first met him, he was quiet, a little bit reserved. He didn't speak very um, much, and he spoke in a fairly slow, hesitating way. So it took time to realize that he was a very thoughtful man and a very independent-minded person. He was himself convinced that the story um, that he recorded in his books and in, and in his photography was one this was worth telling. It is really astonishing that a person with relatively little education, no encouragement or backing, that he was able to do such an enormous amount of work all on his own over so many years. If one thinks about it, he was a giant. He was a really remarkable person. He always believed in life, irrespective of language differences, irrespective of faith, irrespective of uh, racial differences. He was a teacher. He, he explained a lot. He was ready to wake people up and let them think about their, their past, the present, the future. I came to this country in my 20s as a single man with Siemens connection. It was the Prime Minister Harold Macmillan's time, May 1957, when for the first time I came to Birmingham to join my uncle. He had been working for Delta Metal Works in Dartmouth Street as a permanent night shift worker. My uncle was the only breadwinner of our family. As he was getting older, the members of our family were worried. So, I was the next person to be sent to the UK to replace him. Yusuf came to Britain as a young man, and at such an early stage, I think quite consciously decided um, that he was going to record just about everything that happened around him because he was so fascinated um, by life. He used to work in a factory, but he had other aesthetic values which were instilled in his childhood. What really interested him was uh, a new culture, a new world which he was discovering. The story of, of migration, the story of settlement, the development of what is now often called multicultural Britain. He was in at the beginning of that. And I think pretty soon, when other people were spending their spare time sleeping or um, watching the films, Yusuf Choudhury was getting interested in photography. Because I remember everywhere we went, it was only my dad with the camera. Not like, even nowadays, anybody has a camera or video camera. But at that time, it was a big thing. Even the people, they used to come up to him, especially to have their photos taken or request him to take a photo of a particular area in a meeting. And this particular hobby, later on in his life, became his uh, semi-profession, if you like. Without any training or preparation, he gradually taught himself to be a, a very good photographer. We had a studio in one of the rooms, in our front room, I think, and it had all the lights and everything, a proper studio. And lots of people used to come have their photos taken to send home. 
And at that time, he used to enter exhibitions and he's won a few cups. Nineteen seventy one, Bangladesh achieved independence after a liberation struggle in which three million people lost their lives. The Bangladeshis living overseas were greatly affected by the massacre on their fellow countrymen. The overseas Bangladeshis contributed significantly to Bangladesh, gaining international recognition and support in its liberation struggle. British Bangladeshis in particular played a significant role. Yusuf Chowdhury was one of them. I think the main interest that Yusuf Chowdhury had all along was his particular interest for photography. And um, he wanted to kind of uh, arrest the events that took place. Every meeting that he attended, every seminars or demonstrations, whether in Birmingham or in London, he always took pictures. Of course, later on we knew how valuable these photographs were because the, 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 goes, it goes back until sort of as early as 1960s. He felt that through his lenses, camera lenses, he needs to capture the moments of history. And that's exactly what he has done. No, he was not a liberation fighter. He was not a Mukti Juddha, but he was more than a Mukti Juddha because he has created something for the posterity. When war broke out in Bangladesh, Yusuf Chaudhary was in England, like everyone else. He listened to the radio every day and he became very worried because he was getting no news from home and he didn't know what was happening to his daughter who was living with relatives. He decided he just couldn't stand about. He had to go and rescue his daughter. He set off for um, India. He couldn't fly directly to Bangladesh and he went to... Um, the border on the Indian side, crossed over into Zalet and made his way on foot from village to village trying to track down his daughter. At that time we were in, our, in my father's home, Lotifur, and somebody came running saying my dad was here and I didn't believe them. And then suddenly I saw my dad and I think more or less straight away that day we started our journey to India. I crossed into India with my daughter. First I went to see Bijit Lal Das at Chitrobani Picture House where I had left my suitcase. He drove us to the Gauri Hotel. I visited freedom fighters camps and refugee camps, meeting and talking to people. I heard heartbreaking stories from fellow countrymen such as how young girls were taken from their family and young men lined up and killed by the Pakistani army. I met young college students, farmers' sons, and rickshaw drivers who had come to join the Mukti Bahini. Every day I used to go out with my daughter. I always carried my camera slung over my shoulder, ready to take photographs. This picture is a unique, is a relationship between fathers and daughter. This is the love of his life, the daughter. And again, he was in Mukti camp for his country. So this is the two important things in his life, his daughter and his country. He could collect the daughter and come back, stay away, but he didn't. On his return to the UK, Yusuf Chowdhury became a centre of media attention. His story of rescuing his daughter from the occupied land was published in the front pages of local newspapers. The local and national radio broadcasted the story of his brave journey, an eyewitness account of the genocide. The close contact with the media inspired him to record the experience of Bangladeshi migration and settlement in Britain. 
After 10 years of hard work, in 1993, he published his first book in English, The Roots and Tales of the Bangladeshi Settlers. This is a vital book for our history. He wanted to open a window to the um, host community so that other British people could understand more about who the Bangladeshi community are, where they've come from, what their background is, how they've been contributing to British culture and society. And he wanted to tell the story um, of people um, who knew their fair share of hardship and of struggle. For me, when I read it on my own, I start crying. As he told the story um, of his people, uh, wanted to tell it as it is, as he perceived it uh, from the inside. The way he described it, you can really, I can still feel how cold the house was and how they used to uh, cook and someone has to share the bed, the same bed they use with the, you know, the daytime worker. To write what he wrote also took some courage. He was prepared um, to um, talk about the, the, the early days in, in, in the boarding houses. Relationships between the men and uh, the white women, sometimes within marriage, sometimes not, not in marriage, and, and he was open and honest um, about that. And he did it in such an ordinary way it, it, that it was like it was a part of life. Other people setting out to tell um, that story um, with a different uh, bias or different interest uh, may not have told it in the same way. It became for him a very important issue. He must try to put across the, the Bangladeshi experience, the Bangladeshi reality, both to the younger generation of Bangladeshi people and to the host community. There was great advantage in those days, the freedom of movement, which was a great help to be in a job all the time. If at any time anybody fell out with his roommate or foreman or lost their job, there was no problem. Even in a jobless condition, Mr. Ali, Mr. Das or Mr. Khan dressed up in their best suits were freely moving from one end of the country to another without any tension or anxiety. If any man had lost his job in a Manchester cotton mill, he took a train for London and before the weekend, he got a job. Ever since Roots and Tales was published, Yusuf Chaudhary felt that he must um, work over the material in more detail and to a higher standard. And his first step in his programme was to, to, to work up a number of interviews of old seamen, and he chose a number of the best stories to make up Sons of the Empire. This is also a unique piece of our history, you know. Uh, I don't think we will ever have the second one to compare with him, it. There are some quite incredible stories um, of the, um, not only the suffering and the hardship um, that some of the sailors experienced, but also their courage and bravery. It's based on the personalities who are involved in those situations. So we are actually getting the actual story from the mouth of the horse, if you like. They had served in terribly difficult conditions in two world wars. They had served cheerfully and loyally and for many years at a very low pay. And he profoundly believed that that uh, contribution uh, was one that um, ought to be set on record. South Africa coast tika zai kama America, thin nin badeo Atlantic coast to jaz marse, Atlantic duriyat. Saat din saat raayta asla humra fani kena fani to ya uto bolay bolay humre, baijar manus. Once Yusuf Chaudhary had embarked on his 
mission of recording the contribution made by pioneer Bangladeshi settlers. His work soon began to take on a certain urgency. He realized that if he didn't quickly collect the stories of those who were still around, in a short time all these stories would be lost. So he made a point of um, gathering as many interviews with as many of these old jahazis as possible. And now we can see the wisdom of his work. Already, I think almost all of the people he interviewed have already died. So he did a very valuable job of saving oral histories at the very last moment before they were going to disappear. Many people have misconception about the Bangladeshi settlers because they either have wrong information or lack of the same. Many do not know that the Bangladeshis were asked to come and fight for Britain in the last two world wars. We were in their warships and troops carriers when they were facing enemies. We were in British cargo ships to bring in the vital supplies. Most Bangladeshi settlers are the descendant flesh and blood of those who were lost in the seas or survived to tell their tale. So, it is our duty to keep our history alive and remind everyone of who we are and why we are here. One person we haven't said hello to this evening, um, and that's because he's not going to come up here and speak. But I think we all owe a tremendous debt of gratitude and appreciation uh, for the book we've got tonight. So let's thank, especially tonight, and ask him just to stand and say hello. Mr. Yusuf Chowdhury. Thank you very much. So this is the book that um, basically Yusuf and, and myself put together from Bangladesh to Birmingham. It was published by Birmingham City Council and it's, it's selling quite well I think actually because it's just a unique book because there's nothing else on this particular subject. It's based on Yusuf's original research. The beauty of the book is that it's it's an illustrated book. Photographs are use of own, so that they're unique photographs. They're not sort of photographs that come from a photo agency. They're of his own experience, so his own times in Silhet. This is in front of a, his own family's paddy field, uh, and they go on. F they go on from Silhet to to Birmingham. So the book's not just purely about Britain, but it is about about the homeland, where the, where. Uh, Birmingham Bangladeshis have, have come from. Obviously Yusuf was devoted to his homeland and I think that was one particular aspect of um, Yusuf's life that he, he did think very deeply that he and then from that he did something about it which was to, to write books, take photographs, record people's memories um, knowing that it was quite a unique experience, this experience of Bangladeshi people living in Birmingham, having made that incredible journey across the, across the seas and the ocean. This is River Shurma the lifeblood of Silet. In the bank of the river is a small village called Lotipur. Yusuf Chowdhury spent his early life in this village. His village home overlooked a vast paddy field. To make his journey to the town, he used to cross this river every day. The boat, the bridge, and the river, these appeared many times in his writing and photography. He was a typical Bengali Babu. 
although he has remained out of the country for a long time, because of economic reason, his heart was always with Bangladesh, with Bengal. Mone Prani, by heart and soul, he was a Bengali. Yusuf took great pride in his own cultural identity and he wanted his community, Sileti Bangladeshi community, to be proud not only of their heritage, their cultural heritage from Bangladesh, but also to be proud of their contribution uh, to and within British society. Since his arrival in this country, one thing he realised that we as a community need to be part of this society. He was all for integration, keeping your own values. He was proud to be Bengali, to be Bangladeshi, and he wanted the distinctiveness of the community and, and, and of its particular contribution uh, to be appreciated uh, more widely. And his last book, unfortunately, which has been published, was about the development of the restaurant trade. In our Bengali special menu, we have the starters. Manchabura. Full copy singarad and the main courses shatkara mangsho, doi match tarkari, and as a dessert we have sadalau. And he looked not only at the spices themselves and at their use, but he told the history of the developing Indian restaurant business in the UK. Again, it is phenomenal how much work and how much love he put into this book. He didn't just write down a few things he already knew about um, the many restaurant owners who were his friends. He actually went around all over Britain. He went as far as Edinburgh, Hull. I, I suspect that there wasn't um, a restaurant um, owned or run by Bangladeshis anywhere in the whole of the United Kingdom um, of which Yusuf Chowdhury was not aware uh, and uh, whose story and history um, he would have been unable to tell. Um, he had an incredible um, wide um, knowledge um, of the community. He was already past a certain age and he didn't have any money, didn't have much money, he didn't have any backing, he wasn't sponsored to do this. He did it entirely out of his own resources. Yusuf was a diabetic and uh, quite often um, experienced ill health, but he never seemed to stop him. He was so uh, enthusiastic uh, about his, his project um, that he, he invested a great deal of, of time and energy um, into it. And he was enormously active um, in, in the local community as well. But he never missed any opportunity to take a photograph or to collect a story or to conduct an interview um, if he believed that it would contribute um, to his ongoing project. And that was to record and to tell um, the story um, of his people. Sixth of December, two thousand and two, Yusuf Charu passed away from a heart failure, leaving behind six published books and a large collection of work on Bangladeshi settlement and local history. In two thousand and four, an album of his photographic collection on the nineteen seventy one Bangladeshi liberation movement was published. <laughs> Yusuf's work is, in many ways, a real example of community publishing, of a local community, in this case represented by um, Yusuf Chowdhury um, as a member of that community, putting its own story on record, not only for its own sake, but also to inform others 
it's a homegrown initiative. History is very important, and that history for British Bangladesh is Yusuf Choudhury has created for generation to come to know how we became part of British society. Last 20 or 25 years, he spent just collecting the history of our roots and putting them together for the new generation, our next generation, so they could be proud of. In his quiet way, he left us some lessons to think over and to keep with us. The work he started could be carried on. The examination of the way migration has taken place. I think Yusuf Choudhury's observations and recordings are going to be very valuable. I'm pretty convinced that when the wider story of how multiculturalism and pluralism developed in Britain in the second part of the 20th century is told, that Yusuf Choudhury's own contribution will play a significant part um, in the telling of that story. The reason why people from Silet started coming to Britain was because the British Empire wanted people from its colonies to serve the imperial interest. Sons of Empire seemed to describe those people who responded to the call and left their homeland to come and first work in the merchant navy and then settle in Britain. And now, when we think of Yusuf Choudhury and his life, we see that he too could be described very neatly as a son of the empire.